Hey, Star Trek book fans, Dan Gunther here, bringing you another episode of the Treklet Report, my uh, not very frequent show where I review a new book that's come out in the last while from the Star Trek literary universe. This time around, I'm reviewing the latest Star Trek Discovery novel, Dead Endless, by Dave Gallanter, which came out towards the end of last year. As usual, the first part of this review will be spoiler-free, and then I'll give you a warning and get into the spoilers. However, I will say that this book can't be talked about in any kind of detail without getting into spoilers, so uh, the spoiler-free section is going to be very brief this time around. So Dead Endless is, as I said, a Star Trek Discovery novel. It was written by Dave Gallanter. Based on the back cover blurb, a lot of people have asked if this novel is a novelization of events from the television show or an original novel. I can tell you it is absolutely an original novel. However, given the back cover blurb, I can see where a lot of people would make that mistake. So uh, just to recap, here is the back cover blurb from Dead Endless. The USS Discovery's specialty is using its spore-based hub drive to jump great distances faster than any warp-faring vessel in Starfleet. To do this, Lieutenant Paul Stamets navigates the ship through the recently revealed Mycelial Network, a subspace domain Discovery can briefly transit, but in which it cannot remain. After responding to a startling distress call originating from within the network, the Discovery crew find themselves trapped in an inescapable realm where they will surely perish unless their missing mycelial fuel is found or restored. Is the seemingly human man found alone and alive inside the network the Starfleet officer he claims to be, or an imposter created by alien intruders who hope to extract themselves from the mycelial plane at the expense of all lives aboard Discovery? So if you're familiar with the televised adventures depicted on Star Trek Discovery, you will notice that the description is very evocative of the episode Saints of Imperfection, the fifth episode of Discovery's second season. Without getting too deep into spoilers yet, I will say that the book does acknowledge the similarity to those events and there is a link however this is an original adventure and not merely a regurgitation of the events of that episode so i can see where this could cause some confusion for readers i think once you've read the novel all will become clear so i, I do highly recommend by the way picking this novel up because before i get into spoilers i will give uh, my thoughts as to the quality of the novel I actually voted this novel to be my favorite of the Star Trek new releases in 2019. I think this novel was an excellent, thought-provoking story, and a really also great character study of someone in particular, and again, I'll get into that on the other side of the spoilers. Can't say much here, but it's definitely a very worthy read, definitely worth picking up. Dave Gallanter is an author whom I've had the pleasure of meeting, a wonderful gentleman, a great mind, really terrific author. Not as prolific, obviously, as some other authors, such as Dayton Ward or David Mack. However, I will say, based on the novels of his that I've read, when you pick up a Dave Gallanter novel, you know you're in for something special. Uh, I, I point a lot often to the novel Troublesome Minds, uh, also by Dave Gallanter. It, an incredible story, really stuck with me years after reading it. Just a, a really strong storyteller, some great ideas that he brings into his stories. Crisis of Consciousness is also a one from a few years back that he wrote that is just an excellent story and wonderful additions to the Star Trek literary universe. So there's a few of his um, from before that that I haven't gotten around to reading yet, but based on those two and then certainly Dead Endless, Dave Gallanter is an author whose name I know on the cover just means that it will be a quality story. And this is certainly no exception. It does not disappoint. Wonderful story. I really hope you check it out. Well, with all of that said, I'm going to have to get into spoilers now. So if you have not read Dead Endless, I suggest more so with this one than any other novel I've talked about. Stopping here, reading the book, you don't want this spoiled for you. It's a really fascinating story that benefits uh, from going into it knowing not a lot about what the story's about. So this novel has a bit of a distinction of being one of the few Star Trek Discovery novels, one of only two really, 
that takes place aboard the USS Discovery for all of the novels saying Star Trek Discovery on the cover. What we've gotten so far are prequels and uh, one story set aboard the Enterprise during season one of Star Trek Discovery. The Una McCormick novel, The Weight of the Stars, did have a framing bit that was set on Discovery with Tilly and Burnham, but the story itself was very much a prequel. This novel is the first one where you pick it up and events are happening on the USS Discovery. However, as becomes very apparent early on in the novel, this is not our USS Discovery. Now, the author uses a bunch of little hints and tricks throughout the novel to guide you to this conclusion. It starts out very subtle. You start to notice, for example, that they refer to the captain. The captain isn't in a lot of the scenes, but they refer to the captain. And you're immediately kind of thinking, is this during season one? Is Lorca the captain? Is this during season two? Is Pike the captain? What's going on? You slowly discover that neither of them is the captain until eventually it's revealed that the captain of the USS Discovery is Captain Michael Burnham. And yes, you heard that correctly. Michael Burnham, of course, was never the captain of the Discovery so far. Anyway, we're in between seasons two and three here. But in this one, we learn that they are in a parallel universe, very close to ours, not like the mirror universe, but, you know, a universe where it's still Starfleet and that sort of thing. But they are there are very significant differences that have played out in this timeline as compared to what we watch in Discovery. So, for example, the Battle of the Binary Stars didn't happen. Burnham did not attempt to commit mutiny aboard the Shenzhou and... She basically just progressed through the ranks and eventually became captain of Discovery. Captain Philippe Georgiou, the prime universe, well, not prime universe, the, the this universe, Philippe Georgiou, is still alive and commanding the Shenzhou. And it, it makes for a very interesting dynamic. Now, where this ties into the episode Saints of Imperfection and what we know of uh, as far as the fate of Hugh Culber in the Mycelial Network, he is trapped in the network, which we have learned in Discovery is the same subspace Mycelial Network for all the universes. It kind of links the multiverse together. There's not separate Mycelial planes. Hugh is trapped there, and his only companion for most of this is a sort of familiar face, a tardigrade type creature who is variously known in some universes as Ripper, uh, also known as Ephraim, according to this novel. And of course, you may recognize that name from the Short Treks episode Ephraim and Dot, which, you know, the, the novel doesn't outright make reference to that. But there are references that, you know, this creature doesn't have uh, gender specifically, so... You know, he could be the she from Ephraim and Dot. And, you know, all these versions of this tardigrade are kind of the same. It's it's quite a, a bit of a mind bender, but it's a really interesting premise. So, as I said, Culber is trapped in the mycelial plane thanks to the events of season one of Discovery. And we see that play out in season two. And in this one, he in, is encountered by the crew of this alternate USS Discovery, which is using the spore network, the mycelial network, to jump around to deliver medical supplies for a contagion that has broken out within the Federation among various worlds. So in this universe, they've perfected the spore drive. It's, it's working well and... It's not in service of the Klingon war, but instead in service of this humanitarian effort. That, to me, is kind of one of the most interesting things about this novel, is that we get to see how this plays out without that war having happened, without the things that Burnham did in that timeline that took it in, in various directions. So, you know, it's an interesting what if to kind of see what would have happened had that not occurred. The other aspect of this novel that's very strongly at play here is fundamentally a love story between Hugh Culber and Paul Stamets. And this issue is handled with a great deal of care and respect by Dave Gallanter. At the core of it, these two have this deep connection that kind of transcends what we think of as reality and and reaches into the mycelial network and all these kind of flowery things that for example uh 
Anthony Rapp has said in interviews about the relationship between the two of them. And that really plays out in this novel. It, it's really cool to see how that plays out. So in this particular reality, Paul and Hugh did meet briefly at one point, but did not strike up a relationship as they did in our universe. So to see that kind of possibility and what if on the part of Paul as he kind of realizes who this person is and what he means to, you know, a, the, the man he could have been in a different reality is a really fun and interesting story. Bruce and I talked to Dave Gallanter on the Literary Treks podcast, and we talked a little bit about the subject. Dave Gallanter is, of course, himself heterosexual and doesn't have experience with homosexual relationships, but he approached it in a way that made that type of relationship indistinguishable from the relationships that he's familiar with, which makes perfect sense because in the bright future that is Star Trek, no one views those relationships as being any kind of different from what heterosexual relationships are. So I, I think it was almost beautiful that it was just, you know, as it should be written as though there's no difference with no respect to their respective genders or sexes. It's just a love story between two people. And it, that really comes across on the page. I think it's beautifully written and ended up being one of my favorite pieces of background for the characters of Hugh and Stamets. Uh, even though, you know, this isn't the Stamets we know and love. There are, of course, obvious similarities there. But this Hugh, this Hugh Culber is the one from our universe and the one who will eventually be rescued by Stamets and Burnham and Tilly in the episode Saints of Imperfection. So it's it's a really fun piece of literature that that sits in a really particular place in the lore of Star Trek Discovery, which makes it very unique in these types of shows. You know, back in the days of TNG and Voyager and DS9, DS9 less so, but you could have stories that just kind of sat almost anywhere in the series. But Discovery and Picard, for example, they have a very linear story, what we've seen so far, and there's not a lot of room to put extraneous stories, but this one, they found a very specific spot for it to go, and I think it comes out beautifully. So, yeah, high marks, top marks for this one. My favorite novel of 2019. Definitely go check it out if you haven't read it. I really hope you've read it if you watched this far, but uh, it is definitely worth it. As I mentioned, we talked to Dave Gallanter on the Literary Treks podcast. Here's a brief excerpt from that interview. By the way, there was a, an Easter egg in there where I think he calls her an angel at some yeah. point. Yeah, yes. I was wondering if that was purposeful. I thought that was brilliant. <laughs> It was purposeful, but it has no meaning. Right. It was just me being, you know, just a wink um, at the because reader. I remember I read, I read the scripts, I read the scripts for season two, and then had to deal with the next several months of people suggesting who the Red Angel is. <laughs> of course, I cannot say anything um, because you know I'm under an NDA, and and I'm just like, oh my god, it's not the Borg. <laughs> um, Arium is not the Borg. And, and and Burnham is the Red Angel, and why can't you see this? Mm -hmm. um, by the way, I still have friends who having, after season, season two, and after it was all done, I said, it's not the Borg. <sighs> I have no idea why I thought it was the Borg. And he says, I think it might end up being the Borg. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> well, because it goes into their bloodstream and their nano things, and they're green colored, so it must be the <laughs> Borg. <laughs> So make sure to check out that interview and all of the other episodes we've done on Literary Treks. I'll have a link in the description below where you can click the card in this video to be taken to the YouTube version for that episode. Thank you all so much for watching and thanks of course to the Patreon supporters for your help in bringing these episodes to you. I really couldn't do it without you. Thank you to everyone else for liking, sharing, and subscribing, and of course, just watching. That is the best thing you can do. But, uh, you know, if you have a friend, if you know someone who reads Star Trek novels and would be interested in these videos, 
just forward this link to them. I'd really appreciate it. The book reviews are kind of the least watched videos on this channel, uh, but they are the ones that I kind of enjoy the most because I enjoy the novels so much. And I say enjoy it the most. I enjoy all aspects of what I do with Star Trek on this channel, but you know, there's just a special place in my heart for the books. So I kind of do wish more people would see these, but I know that's a function of uh, the the small number of people that actually read the novels which is also something that I think would be nice to change so uh, yeah hopefully I can count on all of you out there to get the word out about these videos and maybe we'll find some people that uh, would like to read the novels who haven't in the past well anyway once again thank you so much for watching I'll see you in the next video until next time as always live long and prosper <laughs>